but I'm going down the trail. I'm going down a steep canyon. I'm going to hold on to the back of this and hold myself into place as I'm going down a really steep mountain. That helps me tremendously. When you're looking at fitting a mule, there's a couple things to consider when you're thinking about how comfortable they are. Back here in the back, there's three bones that sticks up on a lot of mules that's very prevalent. So back in here, I don't want to sew this solid. I want to have room. As you can see, this right here is Cordura, so it's going to move around a lot. Uh, it's not like leather that's going to be solid, that's going to be creating pressure. A lot of you folks have mules with three bumps on their back and those three bumps are starting to soar and you have big edemas that's because it's sewed across here with leather and leather's really rough where this isn't and you can see with my saddle pad this is my my uh, buckaroo saddle pad it helps bring the pressure up off plus the way i've designed the saddle in through here so that you don't put pressure upon those three vertebrae that's in the back you got to remember, your horse saddles uh, are, and saddles that are not designed for mules, they usually are sewed across here with leather. And it's really, really important that you cut those pieces so that this is open or buy a saddle that works. I have folks all the time call me and say they want to buy a mule saddle. I tell folks, I don't have a mule saddle. I have a Steve Edwards saddle. I don't want you to think because you look at my saddle and say it's the same as everybody else, it is not, okay? Now, other things that makes it unique, rounded skirt right here. That's really important. We have a rounded skirt so it does not inhibit the shoulder. Notice also, when I take and put my hand in the front and I tighten down the front cinch, notice how the back of the saddle comes up. So now the saddle is cantilevering, creating the pressure in behind the scapula right where that moving area is, right where the D-ring is where you tighten it up. And you, you, you're going to take that area and restrict it. So here's your, your scapula moving up and down. And right in behind here, you'll see this area move. Watch your mule move around. You'll see this area moving around a lot. And when you tighten that front cinch, the back of the saddle comes up, and you're doing this on your mule as it's going down the road. Your meal being comfortable is the most important thing. That's why I continue to tell you folks, do not tighten that front cinch, especially if your meal's got a real high fat pocket. Now watch this. When I put my hand back here, i.e. tighten up the back seat, notice how the front of the saddle comes up off the animal's shoulders. That's what you want. You don't want the whole tree to be hitting this animal, to be rubbing on it, because right here, the scapula goes up and down, and right in behind this area is where it's a working area where you're going to restrict it if you tighten that cinch. So, rounded skirt on the front so that you don't inhibit the shoulder. Rounded skirt on the back so you don't inhibit the hip. Two important things. And if you notice my D-ring here, how the D-ring is canted a little bit. It's right in between 7 eighths and 3 quarter. And I find that to be the perfect place to be able to have the front cinch. Your back cinch is the most critical, but your front cinch, you are going to be restricting that area.